So in the previous video, we got the foot interacting with the particles and we were coming out with a splash similar to something like this. Now this looks okay, but we maybe want something with a bit more power behind it, it needs to be higher, um, and it also needs to show a bit of the m momentum from where the character is running. So we need some sort of forward motion on the particles as well. And to do that, it's quite simple. We have the foot in the scene which is animating, and the particles in the Bifrost simulation are basically going to pick up on the animation from the foot, and also take through the momentum of that, uh, and follow it through into the particles basically. So if we want to influence how the splash looks, we purely just need to affect the foot. So in this instance, if I just we can see here the, fr the key frames are between 30 and 40. So if we move down here, we can see the foot doesn't actually move that far. So there's not going to be that much pressure going into the puddle. So we could start by, let's maybe move this further back, higher up. You know, if you wanted to, you could even rotate it to mimic a proper foot. But for now, we'll just do this. We'll delete this middle frame here. I'm just going to right click, delete. And again, we'll just lift this up slightly just to get more of an arc. Now, at the moment, we need to update the splash because we're just still looking at the, uh, the calculation that was performed previously. But before we do, in this instance, we don't need to calculate all 100 frames down here. We know that the foot starts moving on frame 30. And if we look, it doesn't touch the actual particles till, well, it's supposed to be about frame 40. So why calculate everything before that? And why bother calculating everything behind that? We, we just want one frame, so we could maybe say, let's make frame 60 our key frame. So let's set the time slider to frame 60. Now we do need a bit of a run up, um, so we'll leave this. But what we'll do instead is we'll say to our Bifrost liquid, start on frame maybe 30. We could possibly get away with frame 35. So now, rather than calculating everything, it will run through and then it will start calculating on frame 35. So it's just only going to calculate those key frames. So let's rewind this, click play, select the liquid. Now one problem is, if you notice down here, this is still green. It's not yellow, so we're not actually calculating anything new. And that's because we haven't physically changed any values on the Bifrost liquid or other nodes. All we've done is change some scene nodes. If I just go to the Bifrost menu, let's just open this up. Now, what's calculated down here is called a scratch cache. And this is stored on the disk, but it's only temporary. So if you start a new scene or quit Maya and load it back in, that will just be, that will vanish and you'll have to do all your calculations again. And this is good for uh, processing um, these sorts of scenes where you're playing around with lots of values. As you can see down here, you can cache this to disk later on when you finalize what you're doing and that'll allow you to scrub through the animation um, without it calculating everything. But for now, we can just go to flush scratch cache, like so. Let's go back to frame zero, select our liquid and click play. And as you can see now, the yellow bar starts at frame 35. So it's only going to start calculating from frame 35. And there we start, it starts calculating and rather than sit and wait for that to go through, I'm just going to pause the video. So that's finished. We've got our 60 frames and Frame 60 is our final one. As you can see, our splash is much higher up. There's a much more impact behind it. 
It's a lot more interesting than the one before. It's also following the the impact and the momentum of where her foot is falling. So if we go back here, foot lands in. As you can see, it's coming up, coming out. So maybe frame 60 is maybe a bit too much, a bit too high. We could probably get away with frame 50. So that's just quickly going over how to change the look of your your actual uh, simulation just by changing the animation of the objects or the scenery which actually impacts with it. So let's say you're pretty much happy with how that is looking and it's looking okay up to now. Um, one thing we can do is we can visualize it better in the viewport and that's by turning it into a mesh. So if we click on the Bifrost node here we can see down here we have meshing. If we turn this on, now it ha does have to calculate, so this is something that you should probably do. You should probably, probably turn meshing on and off as you're working. Um, as you saw there, it took a while for it to calculate, but what we have now is a 3D model, pretty much of how this is going to render. And it's always handy to have the 3D model there when you render as well, just to get, just to add a bit more density to the actual flow of the particles. Now, when you look at this initially, it looks a bit big, um, yeah, big and blobby, and a lot of these uh, drops here are, are just too big. Um, it looks like she's running through custard rather than water which is maybe a look you might want. You may want sort of thicker, gloopy looking water, but we we simply want rainwater. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single attribute to do with Bifrost, because there's a lot that you can play around with and adjust. I'm just gonna do the focus on the ones uh, that we adjusted purely for this illustration. Um, so if we go back to Bifrost here, go back to the Bifrost shape, so we turned on mesh enable um, and down here we have meshing surface radius and meshing droplet radius now the surface radius will affect the whole splash basically whereas the droplet radius will affect well the droplets so let's change these to let's reduce this to 0.9 and we'll reduce the droplet radius to point let just that re, just let that recalculate you should see this get smaller. As you can see there, we've now got smaller droplets and it's a much tighter um, splash, so that's ideal for what we want. And we'll change the droplet size to 0.25. And you probably won't see much of a change in this view here. There we go, so that's all we're gonna change. And what's nice is being able to visualize that without having to change those go back in and render or actually have to go back in and recalculate everything. So now we've got much smaller drops and don't forget these will all be smoothed before it renders um, so don't worry about them looking angular. In fact down here we have mesh smoothing and that will control how much it's smoothed when it comes to render. So that's just quickly enabling mesh smooth. Uh, mesh. Um, meshing um, and what we'll do is we'll do a quick render later with or without just so you can see um, sort of the impact it gives to the splash so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn meshing off because when we come up to the liquid here and we start to play around with these attributes we will have to recalculate and with meshing on it's going to just have a bigger impact on the calculation we basically just want one frame, so there's no point in calculating the whole animation with meshing on, it will just take forever. So now we have, we're back at the particles here, and we're just gonna look at these options here. So basically master voxel size, um, well it's basically the size of each voxel, uh, of the voxels as they're being uh, calculated. 
the bigger the size, the bigger the voxels. And obviously if you want much smaller particles and voxels and droplets um, being calculated, then you need to reduce this size. But again, if if this size is smaller and there's a lot more to calculate, then it's going to take a lot longer to work with. And at the moment, just by reducing those options in the in our meshing, we may not need to go in and adjust this size. Once we start rendering, we can uh, we can come back to that and play around with it. But if we get the look we want, just by adjusting uh, the surface radius here, then that means that we've we can keep the speed in which we're calculating without sacrificing that. Uh, just quickly going through some of these. Vorticity, these options control how the water swirls and curls, um, uh, basically how it looks dynamically as it's being interacted with. Uh, you can disable that or enable it or uh, multiply it down here. Um, and again, we've got uh, more droplet options down here, which we're going to adjust as well. Uh, we have a droplet threshold, which basically, basically it's, um, if you have a value of one, then the, the splash or the, the, the liquid is going to stay together as much as possible. So you won't get many droplets and a much lower value will give you much more spray. So, a value of 0.97 is fine. Uh, what we might do is maybe drop this down to 0.5. So we'll have quite a lot of droplets and a bit of spray because it's water, but we don't want it you know, completely breaking apart. The droplet merge back depth, uh, basically when droplets are nearer a larger part of the uh, simulation, how close does it need to be before it starts to merge back into the the, the, the bulk of the volume. Um, so you can play around with this as well. Uh, we'll just set it at one for now. Um, and obviously a lot of these other attributes I'm going to leave you to play around with and experiment with. Um, there's no point going through all of these if all we're going to do is just work on this puddle for an illustration. There's lots more in there that you can play around with for um, for animation purposes or well, basically just to control the look and feel. I mean, things like gravity, they're quite self-explanatory. So I do urge you to go in and play around with these. Also, go into the attribute editor as well. And a lot of the options are in here too. We have our caching options, which I uh, mentioned earlier. And we'll look more at those in the next video. But all the main options are in here too. So do feel free to play around with those. If we go back to our Bifrost shape, you can see we have other options in here. So you can display or hide the particles. Um, you also have a master render quality up here. So when we come to render, well, when you come to render your, your final splash, it will be worth ramping that up to one. But for now, we'll leave it at 0.5. And then there's lots of other we have our meshing options down here and remember we turn that off so let's just turn that back on for now now we've adjusted those uh, although we probably will need to recalculate this yep we'll probably re need because we've adjusted a couple of the values in the bifrost liquid we will need to re go through and recalculate that but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave these because for this particular tutorial we're not interested in playing around with any of these uh, but like I say feel free to experiment and play with those I'm going to recalculate this and then what we'll do in the next video is just have a, a quick look at the difference between rendering with and without meshing on and then we'll start to look at uh, putting this simulation together with our rain um, and just getting the whole scene working much quicker together.